everyone welcome to my channel so we have our topic for today for disaster readiness and risk reduction which is all about vulnerabilities of exposed element so this will be our topic for quarter three module number three and lesson number three hello students the vulnerability to a natural hazard often asks the question on how large an effect does a hazard of certain severity have on a particular element at rest. This module is written to help you understand the four main types of elements that can be exposed to hazards. The objective of this lesson is to determine the elements that are exposed to a particular hazard. Okay, students, so before we are going to proceed to a... definition, it generally refers to the impact that a hazard has on people, infrastructure, and economy. That is, it asked how big an effect a hazard of some severity has on the particular element at rest. Vulnerability can be a broken down into four main elements that may expose to specific hazards. So what is hazards? So hazards are potentially damaging events, phenomena such as earthquakes, landslides, storms, and etc. Or human's activities such as illegal mining, logging, that cause loss of life, injury, property, damage, social and economic disruption, or environmental degradation. On the other hand, exposure is the totality of people, property, systems, or other elements present in hazard zones that are subject to potential losses. While vulnerability, it is a concept that explains why a community is more or less at rest to a given hazard. It is the coming together of hazard, vulnerability, and exposure that disaster rest occurs. Examples of hazards are earthquakes, torrential rains, storms, and etc. Whereas in vulnerability, example is the resistance against the natural hazard and the exposure. These are the people in the community. Geography, location and place, settlement patterns and structures of houses and infrastructures determine the physical vulnerability. 
poor standard of housing and infrastructure as well rest as the areas of hazard would prone to high vulnerabilities areas. For example, in Cagayan de Oro, island bars, old river channels, creek and former Oxbow lakes such as Isla de Oro and Isla Delta and Isla Bugnao, portions of Consolacion, Tibasa, Calacala, Biasong and River Bank in Upper Balulang were identified by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Mines and Geoscience says as a high flood rest or yes. The islet was inhabited by informal settlers of about 500 families or roughly 7,000 people who built houses made of light materials during the onslaught of Typhoon Sindong, most of the residents in the islet lost their lives. The picture shows the Isla de Oro in Barangay Consolacion, Cagayan de Oro City before and after the Typhoon Sindong. The picture shows the houses built from a wood and light materials in Isla Delta, Barangay Consolacion, Cagayan de Oro City, were destroyed and lives were lost in the raging flood during the Typhoon Sindong on December 17, 2011. Another picture shows about the 250 homes in this 4.8 hectares in Calacala, Makasindi, Cagayan de Oro City were swiped away by the flash flood typhoon Sindong last December 17, 2011. Another picture shows a dawn fire raised the makeshift houses shanties at Zone 8 Upper Dagong, Carmen, Cagayan de Oro City on June 19, 2015. Another picture shows the landslide occurrence in Zone 7, Buloa, Cagayan de Oro City on August 23, 2008, destroyed one house. Approximately 30 uh, families living in the steep slope were advised to relocate to a safer place. Another picture shows the landslide occurrence at Bolonsori Barangay Kamamaan, Cagayan de Oro City on January 18, 2014, where two houses at the edge slope reportedly were ordered for evacuation by the barangay. The picture shows that when vulnerability of exposed elements is reduced and exposure people, property, etc. are kept away from hazard, then the area of disaster risk becomes smaller. This means the damaging effects of hazard are lessened. The following are some prevention and mitigation measures spearheaded by the National and City Government Disaster Rest Reduction and Management Committees. So first is the rest assessment profile with the use of hazard maps. Inundation is the rising of a body of water and it's overflowing into normally dry land. It is the total water level that occurs on normally dry ground as a result of the storm tide, flooding, and is exposed to terms of heights of water in feet ground level. Flood inundation maps show where the flooding may occur over a range of water levels in the community streams and rivers. These maps illustrate the extent and depth of the flooding expected spatial over a given area for a projected span of time, allowing the government and people to see how flood levels could affect their property and in turn helping them make informed decisions in terms of flood response planning, infrastructure design, and environmental purposes. Through these maps, communities can visualize potential flooding scenarios, identified areas and resources that may be at rest, 
and local response effort during a flooding event. Another prevention and mitigation measure spearheaded by national and city government is the installation of Early Warning System or EWS. For example, the automatic mini weather station at the city legislative building and the flash flood alert system in Barangay Consolacion, Cagayan de Oro City. Another prevention and mitigation measure spearheaded by the national and city government is the construction of flood control dikes in Cagayan de Oro River. Another prevention and mitigation measures spearheaded by national and city government is the construction of landslide barriers or slope protection. Since we are done on our discussion for lesson number 3, so now let us proceed to the activity. 